Good morning and welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Freehold. We are so glad you could be with us this morning. A couple of quick announcements for you. First, uh, we will, the church that is, will be offering Lenten devotionals for anyone who is interested. Uh, we can email those to you as a PDF, or if you are going to have some trouble accessing a PDF, please call the church office and Christy can print off a copy for you. Also, on Wednesday nights during Lent, starting with the Wednesday after Ash Wednesday, we are going to have a series of fellowship and worship events. These will be online. And uh, they'll start at 6.30, and we invite everybody to come at 6.30 and have some fellowship. Uh, have your dinner over Zoom with everybody else. And then at 7 o'clock, also over Zoom, we will have an informal worship service. So it'll be like the in-person services that we had in previous years during Lent. But we thought that would be a nice way to get everybody together and participate and feel connected. Finally, we would like to do something a little bit different with the Lord's Prayer in our online worship services. So we are inviting you to submit videos of yourself saying the Lord's Prayer. You can send those to me, you can send those to John Cavicchio or to the church. And we will edit those into the worship videos for those Sundays when we are online. That's it. Please join me in the prayer of invocation. Perfect light of revelation, as you shown in the life of Jesus, whose epiphany we celebrate in this season, so shine in us and through us, that we may become beacons of truth and compassion, enlightening all creation with deeds of justice and mercy. Amen. Good morning, everyone. You always wanted to know who's on what commissions, so we're here to tell you. We are the Mission and Outreach Commissions. Yay! If you haven't noticed the sign at the front of the church because you haven't been to church, we're bringing the sign to you. Wherever there is darkness, be the light. Amen. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> is that good? Yes. in the morning when the world was become and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun and I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth at Bethlehem I had my birth dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance said he and I'll lead you Wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they would not dance and they would not follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and John, they came with me and the dance went on. Dance then, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the time, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the time, said he. I danced on the Sabbath, and I cured the lame, the holy people said it was a shame. They whipped, and they stripped, and they hung me high, and left me there on a cross to die. 
Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on a Friday when the sky turned black. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. They buried my body and they thought I'd gone. But I am the dance and I still go on. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, and he, and I'll lead you all, wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. They cut me down, and I leapt up high. That will never, never die. I'll live in you if you live in me. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I'll lead you all wherever you may be. And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. Now please join me in the prayer of confession. O God, our guide, who once used the star to lead people to Christ, we confess our poor sense of direction. We let ourselves become confused, easily distracted, and lose our way. We fail to follow the signs you provide. Forgive our waywardness, O God, Lead us in the way of Christ so that we may follow his way to you. Amen. Now hear these words of pardon. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. And now, as we are reconciled to God, let us also be reconciled to one another. May the peace of Jesus Christ be with you all, and also with you. Oh.
cannot preach like Peter if you cannot pray like Paul. You can tell the love of Jesus and say he died for Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Guide us, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark. Chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. Jesus and the disciples are in the village of Capernaum. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. Jesus came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought all to him who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. Jesus answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Our second reading this morning comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 16 through 23. Paul writes, If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting. For an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. 
I do it all for the sake of the gospel so that I may share in its blessings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. I know it's been a little while since we've heard two scripture readings in worship, but these two texts play very nicely with one another. They shed light on how we're supposed to live into our call as Christians, as disciples. Over the last few Sundays, we've heard about some of Jesus' first acts of public ministry as they're described in the Gospel of Mark. In last Sunday's lesson, Jesus preached at a synagogue and then cast out some demons. Today's lesson begins as Jesus is leaving the synagogue. He goes to the home of Simon and Andrew, two of his disciples. And there he learns that Simon's mother-in-law is sick, and Jesus heals her. In our translation, Jesus came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. She was healed. Sure, it's a big deal, but our English translation doesn't do it justice. The Greek verb that's translated as lifted up is the same verb that's used to describe Jesus' resurrection from the dead. Simon's mother-in-law doesn't just recover from a fever, she's restored to life. Earlier in this first chapter of Mark's gospel, we're told that Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Jesus is not preaching repentance so that people may one day qualify for a place in heaven. No, Jesus is proclaiming a new reality that is just dawning, just breaking into the world. Jesus proclaims this new reality, and he shows it too. Proclaiming the kingdom of God requires Jesus to address human needs in the present. We see this in the healings that take place in this chapter. In last week's lesson, we heard the story of Jesus casting an unclean spirit out of a man at the synagogue. Today, we hear that Jesus has raised Simon's mother-in-law, from her sickbed. She was very nearly dead. To drive the point home, Mark tells us that after the healing, the whole city was gathered around the door. The city in question is a small fishing village called Capernaum. I've heard that its population may have been as many as 500 people in Jesus' time. So maybe this was hyperbole, Or maybe it wasn't. Maybe the whole village was there. The text tells us that Jesus cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. Here's the part I find really interesting. After Jesus finishes tending to the people of Capernaum, he goes off to pray and renew himself. After all that, Jesus tells the disciples, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. The mission is to go out from that place to preach and teach and heal. Jesus doesn't ask the disciples to build him a school or a hospital or church. No, Jesus tells the disciples it's time to move forward, time to reach new people. It's time to go out and find more sick people, more people who haven't heard the good news. I don't think we're living into Jesus' example. And I don't mean just us, the congregation of the First Presbyterian Church of Freehold, New Jersey. I mean the whole church with a capital C, or at least most of the churches here in this country. 
we want the people who are outside of our walls to have a change of heart and come back to church. We want to attract people to our buildings and show them how friendly we are after you come inside. Every interview I've had for any position, whether as an interim pastor or an installed pastor, has included some version of the question, what are you going to do to bring new people into this church? This is the obsession of every congregation. We spend so much energy trying to figure new ways to get people to come into our churches when the answer has always been outside of our walls. The answer has always been meet people where they are, then preach, teach, and heal. Then move on and find more people. Proclaim the good news. Honestly, I could have preached this sermon before the pandemic, and it would have been much the same up to this point in the sermon. But I hear so many people saying, I can't wait for this to be over. I want to go back to normal. Normal. I don't want to go back to normal. I don't want to go back to the way things used to be. The way things used to be is not sustainable. The church has to find new and different ways to relate to the world outside of its walls if it is to be an effective witness to the love of God in the world. Yes, we do a great job of loving one another especially here at FPC. We are a wonderful witness to the love of God in the world inside of our congregation. And we do a number of good and loving things outside of our congregation. But Jesus reminds us that we must always be busy going to new places, meeting new people. Jesus also reminds us that he can't do this work alone. We're called to follow him. Jesus preached and practiced the love of God for the world. Jesus preached and practiced the forgiveness of sins. Jesus preached and practiced healing and reconciliation. Jesus didn't do this work alone. Jesus called disciples. Our reading from the Apostle Paul offers some practical advice for effective discipleship. Paul tells the congregation at Corinth that he became all things to all people. That also sounds like an impossible task or a recipe for burnout, or self-destruction. But Paul isn't saying that he learned how to be everyone's best friend. He isn't saying that he made himself into the world's best evangelist, or that he's the most popular guy in the world. What Paul is really saying is that he learned to speak the language of all those different groups of people. He learned by listening, by building relationships. He worked to understand the realities of Jews and Gentiles. He spent time living in the various communities where there were tiny Christian congregations. He worked alongside the members of those congregations. And he must have talked to an awful lot of people outside of those congregations. That was an act of great humility. Paul understood that he had a message that he needed to share, but he had to learn how to share it before he began to preach that message. He had to practice the message first. In our gospel lesson, Simon tells Jesus, everyone is searching for you. 
I believe that's still true. While only some people are actively searching for Jesus, many, many more people are searching for the healing, the reconciliation, and the love that comes in and through Jesus, even if they don't understand what they're searching for. People aren't searching for a church. They're searching for Jesus. By all means, continue to invite people to church. But before you do that, let's go out there and show them the love of Christ and the healing that comes through relationship and reconciliation. The pandemic has shown us how isolated some people are. There are far too many people out there who are isolated, cut off from friends and loved ones. Too many people who don't have community. I don't think they're hard to find. And it's our job to go looking for them once it's safe, once it's safe to gather with people outside of our homes. As we do this, we have to act with humility, like the Apostle Paul. Yes, go out and meet new people, but don't try to fix all of their problems right away. Let them know they are not alone. Listen to them. Build relationships in which they are comfortable asking for your help. Then you can practice the love of Christ, which restores people to community. And when you're done, go and preach what you've practiced. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now, please join us in hymn number 819, Be Still My Soul.
still my soul, the hour is hastening on, when we shall be Beloved, before we pray, just a reminder that we count on your generous donations to keep everything going here at the church. You have been wonderful, faithful stewards during this pandemic. Please keep it up. And if you can, please dig a little deeper. If you can dig a little deeper. We need your help here at the church. And if you cannot dig a little deeper, if you're doing everything you can, if you can't do as much as you've been doing, please let us know so that we can raise you up. Now, let us pray. We give our thanks through our talents, our time, and our treasure. Thanks be to God whose love creates us. Thanks be to God whose mercy redeems us. Thanks be to God whose grace leads us into the future. Amen. Now let us pray as our Lord taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Majesty ascribe 
Beloved, as you go forth into the world, remember that we are called to be disciples. We are called to go out and preach and practice the good news of Jesus Christ, our Lord. So go forth and be instruments of God's peace and love and reconciliation. Do not return evil for evil to any person, but know that we are all loved by God and that we are all called to reflect that love to everyone we meet. Go forth and be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, and let all God's children say, Amen.